News. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Don Lemon. Right now, so much of the world is just in shock and disbelief, trying to process what has happened today and make some sense of this gigantic loss. Here's what we know right now, and even though it has been several hours, it is still stunning to say the words that Kobe Bryant, the legendary NBA star, is dead tonight. His adorable 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, known as GJ, also dead tonight. Seven other people, a, a baseball coach, a pilot, all dead. The helicopter they were traveling in crashed outside of Los Angeles. No word yet on why it crashed, but it went down and it caught fire on a hillside in Calabasas, California, about 30 miles outside of Los Angeles. Everyone on board was on their way to Thousand Oaks, California. They were on their way to a youth basketball game at the Mamba Sports Academy. That is a training center opened by Kobe Bryant for young athletes. It opened just a year ago. Why don't you take a look now? This is the Staples Center in Los Angeles, where people have been gathering there all afternoon, just not wanting to stay home. They are paying tribute and they are being with other fans of Kobe Bryant at the place where he played most of his home games in the 20 years with the LA Lakers. I'm gonna take you there live in just a minute. We have so much to report to you about this tragic story. There's no possible way to even show you even a fraction of the tributes that are being shared, shared memories and heartfelt personal reflections about Kobe Bryant that are flooding social media sites right now. We have heard from Michael Jordan, we've heard from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, we've heard from Magic Johnson, we've heard from the former President Barack Obama, and a universe of people whose names you have never heard of, whose lives were touched, whose aspirations were boosted, who are in mourning tonight because an inspirational athlete, an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and a family man is dead at just 41 years old, talking about Kobe Bryant. And we have new information now about the weather at the time of this crash. I want to get straight to Calabasas, California now, and CNN's Nick Watt. Nick, hello to you. You have been covering this story now. You're at the scene. And please tell us what officials are saying about the conditions there. Well, you know, so far, Don, officials have said very little about the potential cause of the crash. You know, the, those 18 people from the NTSB are still in the air flying west. They'll land here late tonight. But the weather will clearly, Don, be a focus of this investigation. Now, we have heard from CNN's meteorologists that the humidity in that air this morning was maybe 100 percent. So that air would have been like soup. There was this marine layer that we often see in the mornings here in Southern California, plus a storm front moving through. So visibility was bad. You know, I spoke to a friend of mine who's a pilot who was planning to fly today and did not fly because of the weather. But Don, so far, absolutely nothing official from anybody official as to what the cause might be. I imagine we'll hear from the NTSB sometime tomorrow. Now, people around here, they report a thick fog this morning. They also report hearing a loud crash as that helicopter hit that hillside. And you know, a fire broke out. That was the first thing that first responders had to deal with. They had to contain this brush fire before securing the scene so that investigators can try to figure out what went on. Listen, they're going to look into the uh, safety record of this particular helicopter, this particular model. They're going to look into the pilot's background. They're going to look at that course. They're going to analyze um, any uh, radio traffic. But weather would right now appear, Don, to be the focus of where they will be looking forward to try and figure this out. But right now, LA just aghast, speechless. One radio uh, sports announcer I heard this morning said, this is gonna be like JFK. You will remember where you were when Kobe Bryant died. Don? Uh, when I got the, uh, someone texted me, actually, actually a very uh, famous uh, director and producer texted me and said, I, I cannot believe it got the first uh, indication from TMZ and said, Don, please tell me because TMZ is reporting it. Does that absolutely mean it's true? And I said, I hadn't heard about it. But as I'm looking over my notes here and, and over the initial reports, Nick, the initial report came in as a brush fire. Did you, is, that, is that so? Well, I am not sure about that, but that was certainly the initial thing that they had to respond to. And just going back to what you were texted there, one young girl came up to me about an hour ago and said, have they actually found Kobe's body? Is there still hope? Have they actually found his body yet? Real disbelief. Listen, this guy transcended 
basketball. He transcended sport. And particularly here in L.A., he was much loved partly because of events like the one he was going to today at the Mamba Academy, to a tournament. I've spoken to a number of parents who were there waiting for Kobe and his daughter Gigi for their game that was supposed to be happening at noon. When the news broke in that gymnasium, there were audible screams. There were then kids who got down on one knee and prayed. Don. Yeah, yeah Nick, I just spoke to a father in Los Angeles who had to coach his uh, daughter's basketball team today, and he said the mood was definitely uh, somber at his daughter's um, gym and the basketball team there. Nick Watt joining us from Calabasas, California. Nick, yeah. we will get back to you, and if you get more information, let us know. Thank you, Nick Watt. Um, we want to take a look now at the, the video. This video, this is LeBron James arriving back in Los Angeles uh, just a short time ago, and you can see, obviously, uh, emotional. You can see him wiping his eyes. Just last night, James surpassed Bryant for number three, the number three spot on the NBA all-time scoring list. You can see him hugging someone there. Again, this video just coming in to uh, CNN. That's LeBron James just arriving back. Um, emotional LeBron James. The last tweet that he get, gave last night, um, actually congratulating, uh, congratulations to James. You're looking at live pictures now from the Staples Center, outside the Staples Center in Los Angeles, and you can see there is a uh, makeshift memorial and a tribute to uh, Kobe Bryant. And I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth. The late, and I'll add to that, great, legendary Kobe Bryant fans gathering outside the Staples Center. And you can see the candles there lighted in honor of Kobe Bryant and his daughter and all the folks who were on that helicopter, that doomed flight with Kobe. And that's where we'll find CNN's Paul Verkamen there. He joins us now. What are you hearing from those fans, Paul? One of the first things that we heard is fan after fan had told us that they wished this was some sort of a joke, a mistake, an inaccuracy, just something on the internet that was wrong, that they just couldn't believe that Kobe had passed. But then once they got confirmation that he indeed had died, they wanted to come down here and share a moment with fellow Laker fans and honor Kobe Bryant. And, and two of them are here, cousins, Michelle and Ben. Tell us about what's going through your mind right now as you reflect on Kobe Bryant. Um, I just, my heart is so heavy. I don't think, Mamba. I still feel so surreal. Um, just thinking about when we went to his final game to this moment and just knowing that he's gone, it's just so hard for us to kind of comprehend. And our family has been such Laker fans and has brought us together, just watching games together and just how inspirational Kobe has been for us. So it's really hard right now. So by that final game, the 60 points that he scored, that was astounding, you know, late in his career against, uh, the Jazz. Now I want to ask you, Ben, why does he seem to transcend basketball for so many people in L.A.? Well, you know what? He, he means a lot more than just basketball. Um, what he does on and off the court, that's just something that he's always done. He's such a great motivational speaker. Um, just the things that he does off the court with the things he's doing with his daughter and, and just what's going on and how the tragedy has been taking place this morning. It's, it feels like it's a, really a dream. It feels like it's a, like a nightmare that's been taking place here. So I feel like the best thing that we could do is just come out and support uh, with other people and just cherish some of the memories that he has. Well said. I thank both of you for...